With House of the Dragon's timeline jumping forward another two years and showcasing the final days of Daemon Targaryen and Corlys Valerian's War for the Stepstones. It's another strong outing for House of the Dragon. On the whole, the show delivers a lot of the drama and action Game of Thrones viewers loved, while still avoiding feeling like a simple retread. There's certainly connective tissue and a lot of parallels, though, which are revealed by its smaller details and references. House of the Dragon Easter Eggs and Game of Thrones References Rhaenyra insists upon hearing a particular song, which includes the lyrics... She fled with her ships and her people, her heart broken for those... This is seemingly a reference to Nymeria, the warrior princess who led her people, the Rhoynar, to Dorne after a war with the Valerians. Interestingly, this isn't the first House of the Dragon Easter egg to reference Nymeria, as Rhaenyra and Alicent read about her in Episode 1. One of HBO's in-development Game of Thrones spin-offs is 10,000 Ships, centered around Nymeria and her journey, and the House of Dragon keeps setting it up. If you remember, in Game of Thrones, Nymeria was Arya Stark's dire wolf's name. Nymeria? House of the Dragon Episode 3 properly gets to the Lannisters. Lord Jason Lannister. I gather that from all the lions. With a prominent role for Lord Jason, along with his twin brother, Tyland. If they look familiar, it's because the actor playing them was also in Game of Thrones. Jefferson Hall, who appeared as Sir Hugh of the Vale in two episodes of Game of Thrones Season 1. It was a relatively minor role, so it's easy enough to bring him back. Speaking of great knights, House of the Dragon season Easter eggs come from Ser Criston and pertain to the Kingsguard, as he mentions his name is written into the White Book. Not so long ago, you held enough power to write my name into the White Book. The White Book records notable actions of every Kingsguard member and is mentioned a few times across Game of Thrones. Most notably, in the series finale, Brienne of Tarth writes Jaime Lannister's White Book entry after his death. A king's hunting party leading to a surprise boar attack serves as a Game of Thrones reference, as it fits with the death of King Robert Baratheon. Robert was out hunting a boar when he was fatally gored by it thanks to some assistance from the Lannisters in ensuring he was in no fit state for the hunt. House of the Dragon, though, better shows how it happened. The boar even takes Kristen by surprise and comes close to injuring both him and Rhaenyra, taking a real struggle to put it down. It's interesting, too, that the boar attack comes in an episode where King Viserys shows more of an interest in getting drunk and hunting than he does ruling or politicking similar to Robert himself. During what now feels like his once-per-episode pontificating on what's right and proper in the realm, Otto Hightower mentions the laws of gods and men. One of the king to deny that he is heir to the throne is to assail the laws of gods and men. It's an interesting House of the Dragon Easter egg in that it's a phrase that's best known as the episode title of Game of Thrones Season 4, Episode 6 which saw Tyrion Lannister stand trial. And conversely, House of the Dragon Season 1, Episode 3 is the most Lannister-heavy yet, and they're judged rather badly by Rhaenyra. Episode 2's ending had largely suggested that the Crab Feeder would be the show's first real villain, with the potential for Daemon's War for the Stepstones to last at least a few episodes. Instead, it skips past most of the war, and the crab feeder is killed at the end of episode 3. But not before raising a question. Did he have grayscale? The gray marks, most prominent on his neck, certainly look a lot like the affliction, which was seen in Game of Thrones with Shireen and Jorah Mormont. It may not matter too much now, but given grayscale drives people mad, it might further explain the crab feeder's actions. 
This is House of the Dragon's first big battle episode, and it sticks closely to the Game of Thrones template in a lot of ways. In particular, the Battle of the Bastards. Aside from opening on a dragon battle, like Battle of the Bastards did in Meereen, there are some clearer similarities too. Damon going straight for the crab feeder is like John going straight for Ramsay. Damon's avoiding of the arrows while running calls to mind Rickon Stark's death. Damon being surrounded by the enemy is what happens to John's army. And Lenore Valerian arriving on the back of the dragon sea smoke to help win the day echoes the Knights of Vale's last minute arrival. In his efforts to woo Rhaenyra Targaryen, Jason Lannister's name drops a few key Westeros locations. He discusses House Lannister's seat of Casterly Rock, which was seen in Game of Thrones Season 7. And from there, on a clear day, he claims you can see as far as the wall and across the Sunset Sea. Both of these played key roles in Game of Thrones ending. Jon Snow went back beyond the wall, while the Sunset Sea lies west of Westeros, so it was from here that Arya Stark sailed off. Viserys discusses his own dream of placing his son upon the Iron Throne, and mentions how few Targaryens are dreamers. This is true, but they have helped shape House Targaryen's history. Aegon's dream of the White Walkers led to his conquering Westeros. Before that, Danius' dream of what would be the Doom of Valeria prompted the Targaryens to move to Dragonstone. Other Targaryens who had so-called dragon dreams include Daron, the brother of Aegon V, and Master Aemon, Daemon II Blackfire and Daenerys Targaryen. Notably, all three had dreams that pertained to dragons hatching, with Danius' coming true. These were the Easter eggs we found in Episode 3 of House of the Dragon. Did you find any other references that link the House of the Dragon to Game of Thrones? Let us know in the comments below. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more updates. Also, check out the next video on your screen. It's not a game.